What's the good word, y'all? It's your boy DKB here. So let's talk about why AVT Elijah Vera Tucker switching positions makes sense this time. And uh, I know generally I try to do a pretty good job of bringing you guys all the stats and statistics and analysis behind things like this. But I think this is a time where the theory and practicality of a, a situation like this, uh, you know, overrides anything that you can find in the database numbers wise. And to be honest, offensive line performances are, especially on an individual basis, they're hard to grade anyways. If you're not a film junkie, if you're not familiar with offensive concepts and offensive line uh, movement, what's being asked to be done on a play-by-play -play basis, which already we're going to be very limited to by not being NFL players ourselves, um, it doesn't make a ton of sense, right? Uh, you know, plenty of people can't tell me last year who our best running off, you know, run blocking offensive lineman is. We'll run a PFF and say, you know, Connor McGovern had a 52.6 grade or whatever he got. Um, so, you know, just for just for the record, so you guys kind of know where I'm coming from this. But uh, from what I was able to see, uh, I believe the Carolina Panthers and the, um, uh, the our New York Jets, of course, uh, the joint practice got canceled today. It was raining. Um, Panthers wanted no parts. It is what it is. But I think in Robert Sala's press conference, he opened up the idea of Elijah Vera Tucker moving back to tackle. And this is in the midst of a conversation that's taking place right now where after facing the Panthers in that first practice, Aaron Rodgers was not happy with what his pass protection looked like. Um, and, and this makes 100% sense, right? The reason you went out and got an Aaron Rodgers is obviously you didn't feel safe with, uh, you know, the keys to the franchise being in Zach Wilson's hands anymore. But this was the, the missing piece in Woody Johnson's own words. We have the defense. We have the elite defense that can carry any other team in the NFL. Uh, you start to find the pieces on the offensive side that are at, exceptional at their position. You have uh, Garrett Wilson at wide receiver. Tyler Croft is sneakily uh, one of the better tight ends in the NFL after what he showed last year. Um, then you take a look at the offensive line, uh, and you have Elijah Vera Tucker, who people feel like has all pro potential. Makai Becton, who people feel like has Pro Bowl, uh, you know, level talents as a floor for the most part. And then you have Lakin Tomlinson, also a Pro Bowl-ish caliber player. Um, and, and you feel confident about, um, you know, being able to take that and run with it. When you want to talk about uh, the New York Jets not being in this circumstance before, right? We, we've had a similar formula, strong run game elite defense game manager quarterback when you finally have a quarterback that without a doubt uh you know no questions asked he can take over a ball game for you put you in a whole different element and that needs to be protected at all costs so the question mark really is at our tackle positions right i think offensive line wise the interior people feel great Connor mcgovern serviceable solid center and then you have joe titman who's a young athletic freakish guy at his position by the way i mean mitch morse doesn't get talked about a whole lot uh, a center that's you know comparable enough to him but um you know titman here uh, is a freak of nature at his position with what he can do with his size athleticism uh and, and length so you feel really confident about that duo there you turn to lake and tomlinson you've seen what he's at least done on film prior to last year, uh, which is some kind of crazy anomaly, but still, he at least has the history to where you feel good about what you have there. And then you look to the right side, and nobody questions Elijah Vera Tucker and his ability to go out there and produce like a top three, top five guard in the NFL. You take a look at the tackle positions, um, the same can't quite be said, but beyond uh, just our starters in the interior, you take a look at the guards, you have Wes Schweitzer still. You have Tristan Colon, who you feel really good about. Uh, if Joe Tittman does win the center position, you have Connor McGovern, who has guard versatility. So you feel very, very great about high-end quality backup play or swing guard play um, for this New York Jets. But the same can't be said at the tackle position. Question marks everywhere. Can Dwayne Brown recover? Will he still be a... Um, above average tackle at this point in his career coming back from that uh i think it was a rotator cuff uh or a pectoral muscle tear or something like that that he was suffering with um for the entirety of the season um you have max mitchell and really there's not a lot of 
major knocks on him, right? He's not a physical marvel or specimen, uh, you know, athletically that's going to blow people away, but uh, he dominated his conference in college. He came in and uh, average is probably the ceiling of what we saw from him last year before a guy that probably should have been beat up and knocked around religiously like we're seeing out of Billy Turner in training camp. What we got out of Max Mitchell was very, very impressive. So he still has time to mature coming to his own. And uh, seeing a, I want to say he was a former fourth round pick for us off the top of my head, turn into a potential starter is nothing to scoff at. Uh, Makai Becton, obviously that knee is a huge question mark for us. Can it stand up uh, to, you know, 60 minutes worth of play? It's anybody's guess at this point. But when he does see the field, when he can go out there and participate with his offensive line mates, not only does he dominate one-on-one matches, but when he's asked to go out there when they're running their outside zone concepts and he's on the move, he he's He's dominant, right? Um, so you feel really, really good about what happens if everything gels together. But the realistic uh, picture that we're looking at is Makai Becton's already missed various, uh, um, you know, moments and, and uh, m- yeah, I guess moments of time throughout training camp. Dwayne Brown hasn't come back yet, which, uh, you know, the early timeline for us was we thought we'd have him at training camp for this supposed competition. Billy Turner, as we talked about, um, <laughs> he he's turnstile doesn't quite do it justice, right? He he's been beat up, and obviously our defensive line is excellent. So this is a very good uh, measuring test for us with uh, uh, who stands out on the offensive line. But he's he's been beat in a way that you would expect a guy like Max Mitchell, if maybe you overrated him. Um, he shouldn't. Billy Turner is not a guy that should have been the weakest link on this offensive line for us. Um, and then you're talking about, you know, we just got back Grant Hermans. We got to see what he looks like. Yadney could choose, which nobody's really excited about. So question marks. What does moving Elijah Vera Tucker to tackle solve for us? Well, we seen last year, maybe some people would consider it a Pro Bowl level performance. But uh, from what I recall, I don't think he allowed a sack, maybe just one. But I'm pretty sure he didn't allow a sack because that was like the big highlight. No sacks over, you know, four different positions he's played. Right, left guard, right guard, it didn't really matter. Um, but he's your chess piece here, right? He's kind of the X factor of the offensive line because this allows you to tap into the depth that we built on the interior. You move a guy like Wes Schweitzer or Tristan Colon up or, you know, Joe Tipman wins. You slide Connor McGovern over to his right side. Um, and then you have Elijah Vera Tucker on either the left side of... Um, um, uh, the left side of, why am I drawing a blank here again, Tomlinson, or do you have him uh, on the right side with whoever wins the right guard competition? Um, you know what you're going to get out of him relatively well. Um, the the floor uh, for a guy like ABT at the, the tackle position is relatively high, considering a lot of the factors that a lot of people, you know, shot us in the foot over when we drafted him was, Shorter arms doesn't really match the qualifications for, uh, you know, the minimal qualifications for a tackle that can succeed in the NFL. He's been able to go out there and prove that wrong uh, immediately. And he went up against some quality opponents. So you slide him in, you create more of a safe haven, right? You're talking about having four positions locked in that you feel comfortable about between, uh, you know, from left guard to right tackle. Um, And then that leaves you with one position where, The question marks you can deal with uh, with a little bit more peace of mind, right? Dwayne Brown, we've seen what he was on one shoulder. Having two back, having this additional recovery time will serve him well. Makai Becton, if he does win, if they want to try to give Dwayne Brown more time, um, you feel good about his performance on the field. It's just can he stay, right? I see him being in kind of a weird position like we've seen with... uh, Certain offenses, when they had quarterbacks like Tim Tebow in the mode or, you know, the the, the veteran high rookie pick kind of situation. Uh, I want to say Chip Kelly was doing this as well. Um, but basically where they have like a, a quarterback in for a half and then the other quarterbacks playing the remaining half type situation uh, just to make sure that you're getting Mekhi Becton at his best all the time. Um, but I, I think that solves a lot of issues. Uh, most assured, having four positions solidified. 
that you uh, believe you can take to the playoffs, you can achieve a Super Bowl with. And to be fair, a lot of people will say this will damage Elijah Vera Tucker's reputation if he ends up performing poorly at tackle this go around. Uh, we have to keep in mind, not only did we you know, throw this duty on him last minute, and I think in game at one point, matter of fact, um, last season for Elijah Vera Tucker, and we've seen how well he did. We're still weeks out from the regular season beginning, so he has this time to prepare to, uh, um, you know, uh, get his body adjusted to being able to go out there and play this tackle position at a higher level than what we saw last year when he was just doing things on the fly and essentially by instinct uh, and, and, and doing himself uh, a lot of favors. If he can go out here and, and save this team, right? Let's say they go out there, they do, you know, we get our crystal ball uh, season. We go out there and win a Super Bowl and everything. Elijah Vera Tucker sets himself up for an extremely big payday. At this point, you'd have to try to essentially pay him as a tackle that can play guard at a high level, right? Um, and, and even the vice versa works, right? A high level guard that can also be a high level tackle. But, uh, you know, this is the way that I think for the most part, I've seen a lot of these dominant offensive lines get built. They didn't always draft or, or sign a guy that immediately performed extremely well at their position. They had to find, as we've heard Robert Salas say, the best combination of five players to play on the offensive line, right? You may have wanted them to be a guard, a center, a tackle. Things just didn't work out in that favor, right? So this is one of those situations where you really have to use the best attributes of the players and, and, and kind of let them figure it out from there. Um, but I, I, you know, I would welcome a line of Dwayne Brown slash Mackay Becton, Tomlinson, Tipman, McGovern, uh, or Tristan Cologne, um, and then AVT. And then you have Max Mitchell who becomes uh, your, your, you know, let's say high level, um, probably overselling it a bit as early, but your high level swing tackle uh, in addition to a guy like Mackay Becton uh, or a Billy Turner. We'll kind of see how things pan out there. But uh Either way, that's that's kind of my thought process and my mentality with this whole situation. And, and to be fair, at least ABT, he's taken a lot of this stuff in stride. I haven't seen if he's mentioned any comments uh, about what's happened here. Um, this is really me just kind of freestyling this particular subject. Um, but let me know what you guys think. Um, you know, final parting gifts uh, or thoughts anyways um, that I would have in relation to this is at least we would have, if they you know, put this into effect immediately, uh, joint practices with the Buccaneers still. Uh, we could potentially see what he looks like against the Panthers if they don't try to hold out starters again. Um, and then you still have that fourth preseason game against the Giants uh, with a solid you know, defensive line to take a look at him as well before you want to make final decisions. But um, yeah, let me know what you guys think on this uh, particular topic and I'll catch you guys again. Peace.